If we don't have free speech, then we just don't have a free country. It's as simple as that. If this most fundamental right is allowed to perish, then the rest of our rights and liberties will topple, just like dominoes, one by one. They'll go down. That's why today I'm announcing my plan to shatter the left-wing censorship regime and to reclaim the right to free speech for all Americans. And reclaim is a very important word in this case because they've taken it away. In recent weeks, bombshell reports have confirmed that a sinister group of deep state bureaucrats, Silicon Valley tyrants, left-wing activists, and depraved corporate news media have been conspiring to manipulate and silence the American people. All right, guys, so we got to talk about Twitter files part six, which is basically more evidence that Twitter is or was an arm of the government, okay? Twitter was a government actor. It was being pressured by, in this case, the FBI to censor content that the FBI did not like. And this right here is ridiculous because the FBI was so involved in this to the point where uh, they were willing to share classified information with Twitter with no impediment. And they were also obsessed with censoring jokes and satire related to the election, <laughs> which again is just kind of funny how we have a government agency being funded by what, probably what, millions, billions of taxpayer dollars. Uh, they're spending their time instead of chasing, you know, child predators, uh, actual violent criminals, murderers. No, no, no. We're not going to spend our time on that. Uh, we're going to spend our time on this, right? We're going to spend resources on censoring jokes about the election that we don't like. Um, yeah, this is, this is crazy, right? And it's also shameful that this is what our government is spending taxpayer dollars doing. I mean, there, there's actually a, a chance that even if you are a non-celebrity, right, or you have a low volume or low follower Twitter account, uh, you can be on the FBI's radar if you make the wrong joke about <laughs> the election. Like, seriously, like that's what's going on here. So without further ado, let's read about this, because again, this is uh, probably one of the most informative uh, Twitter files that we've gotten. This is direct evidence and proof that Twitter was effectively an arm of the government. Substack writer Matt Taibbi dropped his latest installment of the Twitter files on Friday that detailed the FBI's ties with the tech giant. Quote, the Twitter files are revealing more every day about how the government collects, analyzes, and flags your social media content. Twitter's contact with the FBI was constant and pervasive as if it were a subsidiary. Taibbi began the thread on Friday, quote, between January 2020 and November 2022, there were over 150 emails between the FBI and former Twitter trust and safety chief Yoel Roth. A surprisingly high number are requests by the FBI for Twitter to take action on election misinformation, even involving joke tweets from low follower accounts. Taibbi highlighted the FBI's social media task force established after the 2016 presidential election to monitor foreign interference primarily feature in the Twitter files. So I want you guys to take note here of all the things that happened after the 2016 election, okay, in regards to election integrity. Now, we're not talking about domestic election integrity, right? Uh, we're talking about international from, from Russia, right? This alleged election interference from Russia has caused the government and the Democrat Party to lose their minds about the possibility of the FBI interfering with our elections. And that led to the censorship of the Hunter Biden story, which should not have been censored. And the Democrats and the government decided, hey, you know what, we should censor that uh, because it could be uh, Russian misinformation or Russian disinformation. Okay, this is like, what happened back after 9-11, uh, okay, with the Patriot Act, okay? Um, it's like the same thing, the type of government overreach that we see, like how paranoid they have gotten to the point where, again, our freedoms have been taken away because of these things that happened that the government sees as so bad that, again, they have to go to lengths such as censoring and monitoring jokes, right, on Twitter. It's kind of crazy. Do agencies like 
FBI and DHS do in-house flagging work themselves or farm it out. You have to prove to me that inside the effing government, you can do any kind of massive data or AI search, says one former intelligence officer, Taibi wrote. He then shared an email sent to Twitter contacts from an FBI official listing multiple Twitter accounts that, quote, may potentially constitute violations of Twitter's terms of service. Yeah, so the FBI was sending Twitter a list of accounts that they feel like are violating Twitter's <laughs> terms of service, right? It's not like Twitter was identifying people. Maybe Twitter does do this, but this is what this story is, right? This isn't Twitter identifying accounts that the FBI should take a look at. No, no, no. It's the FBI identifying accounts that they think Twitter should look at because apparently Twitter is better at interpreting Twitter's terms of service than, than Twitter is, right? Kind of crazy how that works. Quote, Twitter personnel in that case went on to look for reasons to suspend all four accounts, including Frama, whose tweets are almost all jokes, see example below, including his civic misinformation of November 8th, Taibi tweeted. Taibi highlighted two additional accounts, one he described as being blue-leaning, whose tweets were clearly joking, writing, quote, of the six accounts mentioned in the previous two emails, all but two were suspended. Yeah. So again, this is the FBI telling Twitter how and who to enforce their uh, election uh, misinformation policies against. Again, it's absolutely amazing. Taibi then shared an email from uh, November 5th, 2022. Uh, from the FBI's National Election Command post to the agency's field office in San Francisco, where Twitter headquarters is located with a lengthy list of Twitter accounts that, quote, may warrant additional action. AKA, we want you to ban these, right? <laughs> we want you to ban them. Agent Elvis Chan afforded the list to, quote, Twitter folks. Twitter replied with a list of accounts it took action on, including actor Billy Baldwin. Now, in this list, you can see some familiar names, not just Billy Baldwin, but you also have RSBN uh, Network. Uh, so that's the right side broadcasting network. Um, you see some Trump accounts here. Um, again, th this is the type of stuff they were doing, right? The FBI was literally going after jokes. Jokes. <laughs> jokes were triggering the FBI. So, guys, if you're online, be careful about what type of jokes you make. The FBI could be watching you. Like, legitimately, they could be watching you. Many of the above accounts were satirical in nature, nearly all, with the exception of Baldwin and RSB Network, were relatively low engagement and some were suspended, most with generic thanks uh, Twitter letter, Taby reported. The Substack uh, writer included the reactions to several of the Twitter users whose accounts were flagged by the FBI, many expressing shock at the revelations from, quote, the Twitter files. Taibbi then revealed a September 2022 exchange between Twitter's then legal executive, uh, Stacio Cardilli, and then Deputy General Counsel and former FBI General Counsel uh, Jim Baker, sharing the results from her, quote, soon to be weekly meeting with law enforcement agencies like FBI, DHS, DOJ, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Quote, the Twitter executive writes, she explicitly asked if there were impediments to the sharing of classified information with industry. The answer, FBI was so adamant, no impediments to sharing exist, Taibbi reported. This passage underscores the unique one big happy family vibe between Twitter and the FBI. With what other firm would the FBI blithely agree to no impediments to classified information? Yeah, so again... Um, the FBI was freely sharing classified information with Twitter, uh, which tells you that the FBI and Twitter were, they were butt buddies, right? They was in lockstep. Okay. They were working together. This is the relationship that was going on. You know, the relationship they said it was going on between Putin and Trump, right? Except that wasn't actually happening. Uh, that, that type of relationship is actually happening between, uh, Twitter and the FBI. And I guarantee you it's like that at all these social media companies. Okay. This is just not a Twitter thing. This is all these big tech companies. This is happening. No doubt in my mind. He added at the bottom of that letter, uh, she lists a series of escalations apparently raised at the meeting, which were already handled. The thread displayed numerous examples of correspondence between the Twitter and the FBI, mostly uh, pertaining to tweets the FBI had flagged as possible violative content, aka Bannon, right? Bannon's. 
FBI, in one case, sent over so many possible violated content reports. Twitter personnel congratulated each other in Slack for the momentum uh, undertaking of reviewing them. Taibi wrote, showing a screenshot of the exchange. Taibi then reported, quote, there were multiple points of entry into Twitter for government flag reports. This letter from Agent Chan to Roth re-references teleporter, a program through which Twitter could receive reports from the FBI, adding reports also came from different agencies. Here, an employee recommends bouncing content based on evidence from DHS, etc. Yeah, so they were basically saying we're going to censor content based off evidence from the government. And that was going on here. Again, all the leftists that was talking about how Twitter's a private company. Yeah, you're wrong. They're not a private company. They were not a private company. They were an arm of the government. This is proof. Quote, state governments also flagged uh, content to be reported. Twitter, for instance, received reports via the Partner Support Porter, an outlet created by the Center for Internet Security, a partner organization to the DHS. Twitter execs receiving an alert from California officials by way of, quote, our partner uh, support portal. Debate whether to act on a Trump tweet. Video was reported by the Election Integrity Project at Stanford, apparently on the strength of information from the Center for Internet Security. Quote, if that's confusing, it's because the CIS is a DHS contractor, describes itself as partners with the Cyber and Internet Security Agency and the DHS. The EIP is one of a series of government affiliated think tanks that mass review content, a list that also includes the Atlantic Council's Digital Foren Forensics a Research Laboratory and the University of Washington Center for Informed Policy. He combined. Yeah, so the deep state is real, right? This is the deep state, guys. When people talk about the deep state, th this is the deep state. All these government entities all working together to censor jokes, <laughs> right? Again, that's what's happening here. Uh, Taibi wrapped up his thread by telling his followers, quote, the takeaway, what most people think of as the deep state is really a tangled collaboration of state agencies, private contractors, and sometimes state-funded non-government organizations. The lines become so blurred as to be meaningless. Yeah, they're all the same. Quote, instead of chasing child sex predators or terrorists, the FBI has agents, lots of them analyzing and mass flagging social media posts not as a part of any criminal investigation, but as a pertinent, permanent in and in it itself, a surveillance operation, people should not be okay with this. Facts. Facts. So, I mean, yeah, that's the takeaway here. Basically, the FBI has a whole department along with other government actors, okay, uh, entities, uh, that all they do is sit around on social media and, and flag content. They flag content and then they send it to Twitter Okay, or they send it to Facebook or Google or whoever, and then, you know, they basically pressure them to censor the content. And that's what's happening. And again, you got leftists out there that, that was low. Like, oh, Twitter's not the government. It's not a violation of the First Amendment. Well, I'm like, okay, well, what about now? Still not a violation of the First Amendment, <laughs> right? Where you have the government just flat out censoring speech. I mean, directly. No due process, none of that. They're just like, nope. We, we want to take this down, right? So you got to take it down. It's amazing, man. It really is. But it's no surprise. We already knew that this stuff was happening. It's just that Elon Musk has provided us actual evidence and a smoking gun that that, in fact, is what was going down the whole time. So, again, if you're making jokes on social media, be careful. The FBI may be watching. Just saying. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.